as uh, Adam Schefter noted, I'm sure you noted too, uh, they have a chance to maybe move up and, and acquire a quarterback of the future if they want. I mean, mm-hmm. if they trade their two first round picks and, and maybe their two second round picks, they could possibly move up into the top five if they, they really had to uh, and get a quarterback that they, they really want. So uh, I guess, Scott, what do you think about the, that idea of the, the Patriots possibly packaging these picks and, and finding a quarterback of the future? Yeah, that was honestly my first thought uh, when it came to what they what they acquired in the in the Cooks trade. Um, you know, you look at last year, Kansas City moved up from twenty seven to ten, uh, also included a twenty eighteen first rounder to get Patrick Mahomes. Houston moved up from twenty five to twelve, also gave up their twenty eighteen first rounder to to grab Deshaun Watson. So I think if if they become enamored with a player like Baker Mayfield or Josh Allen, someone who might may, not going to go in the top three, but maybe will slide to the eight to 12 range. Say, I think the the going price there has been about two first round picks and a mid round pick. So now the Patriots have the capital to, to get that done. Um, you know, they could end up trading the number 23 pick and next year's first rounder, or they could end up trading both of the first rounders they own this year. So they, they have some flexibility uh, now to get that done, if that's the route they, cho- they choose to go, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that's absolutely what's going to happen. I think that for them, if you're going to invest that much in a quarterback prospect, they have to really, really love the guy and really know that that's going to be the guy to succeed Tom Brady. Um, and if, if they don't feel that way about a player who's in the 8 to 12 range, and if they can't get up to, to get like uh, one of the, the top two guys, um, then they might just pass on quarterbacks and load up on some defensive players. Uh, it'll be the first year since 2012 when they drafted uh, Chandler Jones and Dante Hightower that they, they had multiple first-round picks. So they can go that route and try to get some young impact defensive players if they elect not to take quarterback. I just think right now they just have options. And, and, and it's, it's always better to have that flexibility and to be able to choose what you want to do on draft day. For sure, yeah. And, I mean, you look at the, the offensive tackles. I mean, um, let's say Mike McGlinchey falls down to at number 23. The Patriots would mm-hmm. be in position to scoop him up. Uh, Connor Williams, Colton Miller. I mean, these are guys that have been marked with the Patriots uh, later on. But by moving up, they give themselves more flexibility to make sure they get that top offensive tackle if they want that. Um, there's also a bunch of linebackers that could be taken in that area. I know Leighton Vanderash was a guy that uh, people have been mocking to the Steelers a lot. At 23, they'd be ahead of the Steelers if they wanted to go that route. So um, Mm -hmm. a lot of good players there in the first round. It just gives them incredible flexibility on what they want to do if uh, they do take uh, – if they do – uh, make picks with all the four picks. They want to trade back, trade trade up. I mean, it gives them a ton of flexibility. And uh, Cooks was a guy you weren't going to have past this season 